now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to the World Over Live. My next guest is the president of the Catholic League and a tireless defender of religious freedom here in the U.S. and abroad. He's also a sociologist by trade. To discuss some big stories of the week, we'd like to welcome back to the program via satellite from New York, Dr. Bill Donahue. Bill, thanks for being here. How are you doing, Raymond? Very well. Thank you for having me. As we reported earlier in the show, that consecrated host that was sought by the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City has been returned. But the city officials there are still saying they have to protect the First Amendment rights of the Satanists and allow the black mass to happen on public property. Your reaction? Well, you know, here's the problem for them. You take a look at the strictures, the rules of the civic uh, center where they're having this event or they're supposed to have this event, and they do give them latitude. They do give them reason to deny them on the basis of their religious bigotry. So it goes beyond the First Amendment. They got themselves into this own bind, and I'm glad they did. They're acting responsibly, the civic center, by saying it's not a free-for-all. There's no such thing as a right which... And I think that's where they should have been hung up on the first place. But I have nothing but admiration for Archbishop Coakley. We're proud to stand with him. We called attention to this early, but he's the one who deserves the credit, not the Catholic League, because he's the one who persisted on this. He's the one who knew, and this, uh, this lawyer Caspino uh, did a great job, and others who are looking into this saying, listen, if you have a consecrated host, then you must have stolen it to mm -hmm. use it in a profane manner. And by the way, uh, we're not just talking about people who might, you know, say evil spirits on the host. They urinate and defecate on a concentrated host. Mm. The people who do this are evil. They're the, they're the nonviolent equivalent of the thugs in the Middle East. Mm. Uh, Bill, uh, some lawyers have suggested to me that uh, people should call the city center or the local officials and tell them, wait a minute, aren't there strictures and laws in place against hate speech and hate crimes? And might this constitute a hate crime or hate speech against the Catholic faith? Well, there's no question. If you said, for example, you wanted a neo-Nazi group coming in there and they wanted Nazi insignia uh, being displayed, and you could take a look at what they could do with gays and other groups which are get more protection in the Catholic Church, there would be more of a problem. I don't... Look, our society has become so inured to the suffering of Christians, both domestically and overseas, that somehow we just figure, well, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate, and these things kind of go on. Look, the president of Harvard University had a black mass on her campus. She acted responsibly. She didn't try to deny it. Okay, there's a free speech element there, but she condemned it. She marched in a procession. Now, there have been some statements from public leaders recently about this event. They should have been out in front from the begin very beginning. You can mm -hmm. marginalize and isolate people, but again, I champion, the champion here is Archbishop Coakley uh, and other bishops who stood with him in that part of, of, of the United States in the Southwest. Bill Donahue, there have been calls in Kansas City, particularly by the Kansas City Star, the paper there, for Bishop Robert Finn to resign. I'm changing gears a bit, but we've got to move through all of these. Uh, the case in question involves a priest who had pictures of young girls on his computer, including one nude shot. Now, the charge is that the bishop failed to report suspected child abuse. What have you discovered? I know you've been looking at this case. Oh, we looked at this case going back to December of 2010. A technician found that there were some crotch shots of girls fully clothed on the computer of a priest. Now, obviously, a priest is disturbed by taking those pictures. Quite mm -hmm. frankly, what Miley Cyrus does on television with her twerking uh, is, is, and live before a family audience is far more profane than anything found on his computer. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there were some red flags. What happened is they immediately looked at this. There was one naked picture of a non-sexual nature, and they reported this. The, the, the authorities looked at it. They said, well, it's not pornographic. Yeah. He, they, the, the priest attempted suicide the next day. They put him into analysis. He was diagnosed as having depression. He was diagnosed as not being a pedophile. Restrictions were placed on his movement. There was no complainant. No complainant. It was Bishop mm -hmm. Finn who took, took the bull by the horns on this. He recognized there was a problem here, and he's the one who put restrictions on him. He didn't have to do that. He's the one who ordered an investigation. Look, I know what's going on here, all right? I have a piece coming out in Catalyst, our monthly journal, in September. It's a special report. There's an orchestrated attempt by people who live in the Midwest, and I'm talking to, like, activists, the National mm -hmm. Catholic Reporter, name the names, 
SNAP, that phony uh, group by David Cloessy, the victims group. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, also you have Jeffrey Anderson, the steeplechasing attorney. They work Plaintiff together attorney. with the Kansas City Star and the St. Louis Post Dispatch. They want to take down a bishop. They want a bishop's scalp from the Midwest. They want him in the Midwest because a lot of these Midwestern bishops had to, had to come in and clean up on the likes of some other bishops who were there before them, and they took care of the dissidents. This is a left-wing orchestrated attempt, hmm. and here's the proof. But there Bill, are a number of bishops who are on the left who had a much worse record pass from these people. I proudly began with Bishop Finn. Uh, Bill, I, I just want to add, the bishop, Bishop Finn, was found guilty of one misdemeanor for not reporting suspected abuse. Now, I know he contacted, however, authorities and, and an attorney, police and, and an attorney at, at some point early on. Why was he convicted then? If he's not guilty. Well, because these things, these things came out subsequent, and he doesn't know exactly what's going on all the time. They're saying that through somebody else, he should have found out about it at this point. They tried to get him on more serious stuff, and they couldn't. Look, mm -hmm. this is the sixth time the Kansas City Star has called for his resignation. This newspaper works with Jeffrey Anderson and Rebecca Randalls, the lawyers who like to sue the Catholic Church. They work with David Cloessy and SNAP. It's a well-greased machine. Uh, Anderson gives SNAP the money, and then SNAP gives the tips to the newspaper, and then they arrange their pressers, their mm -hmm. press conferences. So what's going on here is diabolical. Have there been some missteps by some of these uh, Midwestern bishops? There have been. That they don't rise to the hysteria, and this is a left-wing attempt to bring down Orthodox bishops. If he had been a National Catholic Reporter type bishop, believe me, they would look the other way. Okay, I want to I want to talk for a moment about the culture bill. Um, uh, there, there's a new show on Comedy Central. It is called Black Jesus. Now, when it premiered, Bill Donahue of all people said, and I quote, "The Jesus character in the show." is a mixed bag. He is irreverent and can be downright crude, but he also has many redeeming quality. Bill, he uses drugs, he picks up women. How is that redeeming? Well, here, this is, here's the, the good side of it. First of all, they recognize him as Jesus. They recognize his divinity. Mm. They don't trash him. He doesn't come across as somebody, uh, as, as Bill Maher would do. Mm -hmm. It comes on at 11 o'clock at night on the Cartoon Network. It's basically uh, delivered for young males. Mm -hmm. And if they can get the Jesus message of forgiveness and respect and kindness, all of which that character shows, I'm thinking that the show. I think it's crude. On the other hand, if this is the Jesus message of forgiveness and kindness and respect, and they recognize his divinity, and last week they showed him creating miracles, maybe some of these young white males, those are the guys who are in the problem segment watching this stuff, mm -hmm. maybe 10 years from now when they grow up and mature and have kids, maybe the real Jesus message will come through to them. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but you know, it's 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I, I expected Jesus to be, uh, you know, done the way Penn Jillette would deal with him. Yeah. And, and yeah. he's not that way at all. There are some redeeming qualities. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about Ferguson for a minute, the riots we've been seeing over the last week. They seem to have, have subsided. You have a sociological take on this. What is driving this, Bill, in your opinion? It's not genuine outrage well, what, over what happened to Michael Brown? Uh, well, in part it is, but it's all been trumped up largely because of the social media and the conventional media, which draws attention to this, and it brings in people from the outside. Edward Banfield in 69 wrote a book called The Unheavenly City, and he talked about how writing can be fun, and it's done for profit. Well, you know, almost everybody who's been arrested in the last couple of days has been from out of town. Mm -hmm. Who paid for these people to come in there? What do they do for a living? They're professional agitators, and the more the media give rise to this, the more likely they're going to vent. Look, there is a sense of, per of perceived police injustice. I say perceived because we don't have the evidence on this. I also tracked when riots take place. Since the 1960s, I enumerated 11 of them, including Ferguson. Every most of them were in the summer. A few of them were in the spring. There's no such thing as a winter riot. Why? Because it's cold outside. My point to the social scientists is, 
Don't overanalyze these kinds of things. It's a good time. And I said, if we can control the rain and control the weather, I would make it rain in the, in the high crime neighborhoods on weekends. That would cut down precipitously on the crime rate. I was just proven right yesterday. Almost nobody showed up. There was no violence. Why? Because it rained. And when it rains, people get wet. And that's why they want to go inside. Hmm. All the time in high crime areas, it wouldn't have these problems. Don't mess with Father Nature if he's Bill Donahue. Bill, thanks for being here. That's right. Uh, and the work of the Thank Catholic you. League and Bill's columns can be found at catholicleague.org.